yeah, dude. I forgot my tripod. <laughs> I forgot one for the big camera and forgot one for this. But yeah, in the mornings out here, the uh, it's really, really cool. It's almost cold, man. If my friends were out here and my family, oh, dude, that, that I would live out here in a heartbeat, man. All right, guys, let's open it up. Before that, I just want to pray real quick. I want to pray for the day, but I also want to pray for your day. If you have a need for prayer and you feel comfortable putting it down in the comments section below, I read the comments and I'd be honored to pray over your prayer request. If it's private in nature, just say that you need prayer. And I believe that the God who knows your need before you ask of it will supply it exceedingly and abundantly. Either way, I just, uh, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray for my buddies and us and just make sure that, just, uh, just be thankful. Father God, I thank you so much for this for, for breath for this day I'm just very thankful for my friends Lord I just pray that you would protect us today give us strength and wisdom help us to build one another up and help us to draw closer to you through your creation I pray for anybody watching right now um, that you would guide them give them peace that any questions they have Lord that they would seek you I just pray that you would give them strength, Lord, and that any need that they have, that they would trust you and that they would find the solution in you and that you would just make your name known, that you would glorify yourself through our life and our experiences and our love for one another. Help us to love one another more. Give us humble hearts. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. All right, now hope that the wind isn't just ripping past the uh, the microphone and just completely distorting the audio. There's a good chance it is. You see the sun rising on that, that uh, canyon back there? The sun's slowly coming over right here. I can almost see it. There are clouds in the way right now, but let's get into it. What we got here? I'm thinking, what should we read today? So Mark 11, start to the triumphal entry. If you don't know what the triumphal entry is, essentially Jesus, um, there were, there's a prophecy about the Messiah riding into Jerusalem. And I think that the, and as far as Jewish custom goes, they believed that if the Jews were worthy of the coming Messiah, because they believed that a Messiah was coming, meaning that they believed that there was a, a king that was going to rise up, that was the son of God, that was going to come and deliver them, come from heaven and deliver them from the oppression of their enemies. And he was going to lead them in battle against their enemies. Jesus came as the Messiah, as prophesied, but the Jews' interpretation wasn't met because they thought that a literal soldier king was going to come and lead them to battle against their enemies when Jesus came to defeat sin and death. And that's the true enemy. You know, the word says our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with spirits of darkness, powers of darkness in high places. You know, when Jesus came, he came to, to cut the head off the snake of the real enemy, you know? And so the Jews believed that when the Messiah came, if, if, the, if, if Israel, his chosen people, was worthy, then the Messiah would come on the clouds. But if they were unworthy, he would come on the back of a donkey. If any of us was worthy of God's love, that would be an impossible, that is an impossible standard for us to hold, but that's why Jesus came. And that's why we have grace, you know, and God loves us when we don't deserve it. And he changes us and teaches us how to be better and do his, his will as we draw closer to him and surrender to him in love. You know, that's the way that he works in us. So there's a little bit of backstory there. So, Mark 11. We start Mark 11 off with the triumphal entry, talking about Jesus riding in to Jerusalem on the back of a colt, a donkey's colt. Really, the part I wanted to get to was where <clears throat> Jesus talks about faith. Mark 11, 23 says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power but believes that what he says is going to take place it will be done for him in accordance with the will with God's will for this reason I am telling you whatever things you ask for in prayer in accordance with God's will believe 
with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. The footnote here says that Jesus used this moment to emphasize to the disciples that a person's confident, abiding faith combined with God's power can produce absolutely amazing results. If the request is in harmony with God's will, God is fully capable of doing that which man regards as impossible. There's a, there's a verse um, talking about, let's go to the mustard seed. Or, no, Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, 31. So Jesus gives them another parable. He says, he gave them another parable to consider saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now, in Jewish tradition, the, the Pharisees, the hypocrites, used to use a mustard seed as a, uh, as like a, a, an analogy for someone's small faith because the mustard seed was the least of all the seeds. It was the smallest seed. And all of the seeds he planted in the region, it is the smallest. But when it has grown, it is the largest of the garden herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air find shelter in its branches. Jesus knows our heart. And when we come to him and ask, he, he does not... When you come to him in prayer, he doesn't expect you to just show up with the faith of Billy Graham and be like, all of a sudden, I need to believe as much as Moses believed that the Red Sea would be parted. Even though that, that should be something that we should strive towards, you know, to believe God more would be awesome, right? But sometimes we don't have the ability to be able to bring that to him, you know? And God is understanding of that in you. You don't have to show up and believe that in your circumstance, when you may have never seen God move, or you may have never heard God's voice, it's not like he just expects you to show up like Moses and be like, because, you know, in that verse, I, I, for a while there, it discouraged me because it was like, man, God can do anything, but I'm not enough. But the thing is, is God knows you. And so when you come to him with the view of knowing yourself and being like, God, it's not about who I am. It's about who you are. And I believe in you and what you said you can do, despite who I am. That amount of faith, talking about the faith of a mustard seed, that's when God can do amazing things, when we trust in him. It has nothing to do with us. Sometimes we get so like, caught up in thinking about who we are, what we're bringing to the table, when the, that is completely missing the point. Because... We are imperfect, and when we come in a, and put our abiding trust in a perfect God, that's when you see things come to life, you know? And that's something I'm still working on. It's hard for me, you know? It's, it's hard to look past myself. That's what the enemy wants you to do, you know? He wants you to focus more on you than on your perfect God. And the second that the focus can get shifted from your power to God's. I mean, that's when you literally see, that's what Jesus is saying. He said, if you have confident trust in God's unlimited power, then it will be done for you in accordance with his will. You could say, speak to this mountain, have it lifted up and moved and thrown into the sea. That can't, those results can't come from focusing on yourself. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens from focusing on yourself, you know? Just being too introspective, being too in your head, being too too hard on yourself, too hard on others because of the, the standard that, you know, others can't meet. You know, you get to start thinking about what you deserve and start forgetting where you came from, you know? And that's something that I've specifically been trying to remember in days where my heart is feeling like, man, this is too much, or man, I don't know if I'm enough. I don't know if I can if I can do this, or you know, I just start floating back in my mind to times I was grateful throughout my life, and remind myself that I'm loved. Remind myself that I've come a long way, that God's brought me a long way, and that I have a lot to be thankful for, and a lot to thank Him for even though those things that I'm thanking him for may not have happened yet, you know? And I know he's gonna do it. Anyway, I'm about to get off my soapbox, but I just wanted to bless your day with that because I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do this, especially in such a place like this. I mean, who am I? I hope you have a, a, a fantastic day today and just 
don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. But also have the courage to face those things that are keeping you from being who you want to be. You know, because you have a choice. You have a choice on what to focus on today. There's always good and there's always bad. And you have a choice to focus on the good. And that decision makes a difference. Show up being you. But being the version of you that you want to be. So anyway. Alright guys. Amen, amen.